especially to our veteran guests. We're so glad you're here. I feel like it's been a while. So this next song that we're going to play for you is the Salute to the Armed Forces, where we go through all of the chorus songs. And Ms. Shannon is here to announce them as they go by. And if you are willing and able, veterans, uh, when you hear your chorus song, we'd love for you to stand so that we can recognize you and honor you with our applause.
they don't usually let me have the microphone, so now I feel nervous now that I'm looking at all of you. I wasn't nervous until now. Uh, these kids are always amazing when they get up here and sing, and I have such respect for them after I have to stand in front of you like this. I feel afraid. Um, I get, um, this time, about this time of year, my students and I, we participate in the Lions Club Peace Poster Contest. Um, it's, a, it's actually a really wonderful opportunity to get students to think about uh, the kind of character traits that we want them to have to be better humans in this world. Um, it's a really interesting visual graphic contest that really lets them stretch their, stretch their legs and show off a little. The students are not allowed to use any words or numbers in the poster. They are only able to express the theme uh, with with their graphics, and they always do such a wonderful job. Um, I didn't write down a speech at all, and um, I had a student this morning, she brought her artist statement into me, and I thought, oh my, this is so well written, I think I'd like to read it to you, but I guess I'd better introduce to you the winners. Um, the winners this year for the contest are Lady Sullivan, she's our first place winner. Assembly. We're really happy to be back. This is uh, year about 28 for us. 
much. We missed a couple during the pandemic, but we're so pleased to be all back together so we can honor our veterans and say thank you to them. Um, middle school, thanks for being here. Um, for this next part, I've heard you in the lunchroom, you're very loud. So for this next part, part, make sure you use your middle school voices and help us. But middle school, high school, if you could please stand and help me thank our veterans for their service. Right now I'm on Bellows Air Force Base. Uh, it's a nice recreation area that the Air Force provides for all service members. It's really, really beautiful, and we uh, actually, the kids and I, uh, this this is our favorite beach um, so it's a great place uh, for all, all service members to be able to come and kind of relax uh, but I digress uh, so I would like to start off by saying thank you Mr. Van Cleef and uh, Galena School District for allowing me to uh, speak I uh, I usually think speeches are difficult but they're even more so when I'm not there with with a crowd to kind of guide me and how how boring I'm being or how how not boring I guess I'm being. So thank you for this opportunity. Um, I, I would also like to show my appreciation uh, for my family, of course, my mom and dad, um, for always guiding me for everything through everything that I've done, always telling me that I could do better. Um, they've, they've been a definite huge guiding force in my life. Um, and then my brother and sister for always challenging me and uh, giving that that uh, constant ribbing that we always give to each other that kind of helps us um, be better than we normally are. I also want to thank Ashley um, and my, my four wonderful kids for all their support. Uh, you learn really quickly in the military that uh, your your support your main support is those individuals who are in the same house as you because they are the only people that you really can talk to at a moment's notice 
uh, everybody else you have to you know make make long distance phone calls or anything like that but your wife and kids they become your best friends and your main confidants so I am so thankful that they had the chance to go with me on this uh, journey through our military experience um, so I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about myself uh, I attempted to join the military right out of high school uh, but was denied entry because of uh, medical issues the that that rejection I, I went ahead and uh, joined or went to Pittsburgh State University for three years and and attempted to become a veterinarian but uh, around 2005 I had heard that the United States was deciding to uh, surge their troops in Afghanistan or in Iraq so I, I took that as a chance to join so I once again attempted to joined the military um, and was accepted in and it was I was basically the perfect candidate because I already knew what I wanted to do and how long I wanted to do it for so all I had to do was sign papers um, I joined as a military police officer in 2005 attended basic training at Fort Leonard Wood and uh, traded with an individual who was assigned to Fort Leonard Wood getting ready to deploy because he was having family issues back home and um, I was getting ready to go to his home state at Fort Gordon so uh, we traded and I took Fort Leonard Wood and I was deployed to Iraq almost immediately and when I say immediately I mean I graduated basic December 1st and I was in Iraq uh, January 16th so it was pretty much immediately I was in Iraq um, my first deployment was was very active um, I can remember the moment that we landed uh, we went from Baghdad International Airport to our uh, Camp Liberty and on the way to Camp Liberty you pass the main gate as we were passing the main gate uh, I saw a Abrams, uh, one of the uh, a world class tank, um, being towed in with the barrel drooping and it's off of its track and bunch of holes punched in the side of it. And uh, there's nothing more sobering than driving past an Abrams in that condition as a brand new soldier and thinking, what did I get myself into? Um, we were hit my squad was hit at at least 12 times and my truck directly was hit once um, I also witnessed a heavy up armored truck be tossed in the air like it was a hot wheel so my first deployment was definitely an active deployment um, came back to Fort Leonard Wood and d worked the road as a patrolman for about a, about two three months became an NCO and deployed right back to the same place in Iraq uh, 15 months but this 15 month deployment was l way less active than that that year deployment before a uh, couple of mortars couple of explosions but nothing that hit us directly thank God after that 15 months I came back I had to call branch because I, I felt like branch had forgotten about me <laughs> so I called branch and they said they had Hawaii um, I said, okay, well, let me see if that's where my wife wants to go, you know, like a good husband. Um, they said, you better hurry because it's not going to be here for long. So I, I ran home. I talked to Ashley, and she basically gave me a look like I was an idiot. Uh, so I called Branch back, and luckily uh, that assignment was still available. So we came to Hawaii for our first time, and uh, it, was, it was a great experience. The kids got to travel to different islands. My w wife went to almost every island. Um, and then uh, the last year I was here, I got hit up to deploy to Afghanistan as a PSD with Protective Services for a three-star general. Probably the most fun I've had on a deployment. Uh, we got to train with DEA. We got to train with Special Forces, the Marshals, um, Germans, British. Uh, we even got, got to have some fun with the British as... We had competitions for volleyball. Um, we beat them in volleyball, 
and the stakes were that if we if they won we would have to run around the fob with the british flag saying god save the queen and if they won or i'm sorry if we won they would have to run around the fob with the american flag saying the americans win again after winning they started to run with our flag and hold up their end of the bargain until their general came out and told them to stop so you know, it was a lot of fun um after that uh deployment i came back to hawaii and uh, came down on orders to go to germany germany another good experience we got to travel all over europe uh, i don't think there was a country that we didn't go to uh, some of the best ones were london we went to uh, london the city of london we went to uh, um, paris france we went to the netherlands uh, brussels we went to berlin um, Estonia, Norway, Finland, Italy, Greece. We, we got to travel all over the place, and we had a lot of fun doing it. Um, then I came back to Fort Leonard Wood, where I instructed probably around 50,000 soldiers coming through basic training. I uh, instructed them in detainee operations and also in, uh, in law enforcement. Um, that that really helped me, um, gave me experience in speaking in front of people and kind of did away with that fear of speaking in front of people. So I was really thankful for that. And now I'm back in Hawaii where I am a platoon sergeant, um, which is a key developmental position for, for my rank, uh, E7. So I get to be responsible for soldiers, their welfare, their morale, um, and that of their their family members to make sure that you know they are ready to deploy at a moment's notice if need be uh, it's a very thankless job but it is a very important job and I take it very seriously and I'm, I'm glad I get to do it uh, but after this it, it, I'm at 17 years so I only have I only have three years left before I retire from the military and uh, the military has opened a lot of uh, opportunities for me um, in other fields, uh, I received my master's degree while I've since I've been in the military. Um, I've gotten offers from Secret Service uh, and from the Border Patrol, and there's other other companies reaching out. And I haven't I haven't even started the the process of out processing. So I'm I'm really looking forward to my civilian civilian life. Um, so I am thankful for everything that the American people do for the military. Uh, we definitely have it easy thanks to those people who support us. And um, schools like Galena High School that support their military and have Veteran Day celebrations like this really help build our morale and show us how important we are to people. And I am thankful as I'm sure a lot of other soldiers are thankful that you all put this, these things together um, for us. Uh, my my family is very patriotic. They're they're all a lot of us answered the call to serve. My dad, who you guys know as chief, is uh, a retired sergeant first class for the United States Army. My brother is a currently serving officer. We don't hold it against him uh, for the Air Force National Guard. And uh, I have cousins, uncles, aunts, um, friends who have all served. And I couldn't be more proud of every one of them and thankful that they do answer that call. So thank you for everything you all have done for us. And thank you for giving me a chance to speak on this day, which incidentally is uh, the 20th anniversary of my graduation from Galena High School so uh, thank you for that and um, I I couldn't have couldn't have had a better way to um, celebrate that 20 years and celebrate my Veterans Day so uh,
administration for all of our health and planning, and especially for Mr. Hunt, that makes this day the day that it is, for doing all the things that I like, that I used to do. On behalf of the junior class, I would like to welcome everyone in attendance today, veterans and their families, board members, teachers, administrators, students, community members, and other special guests. It is now my honor to introduce the reason we are all here today, our veterans. When I call each veteran's name, would you please stand if able, or raise your hand if not able, so we can recognize all of you. I would like to introduce all of our Korean War veterans first, and then please everyone hold your applause until I can introduce all of them.
this day, Veterans Day, and our veterans. I'm going to announce the winners. Please stand when I announce your name. Fourth place goes to Casey Hopkins and Jason Long. A few moments ago, I placed a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. And as I stepped back and stood during the moment of silence that followed, I said a small prayer. And it occurred to me that each of my predecessors has had a similar moment. And I wondered if our prayers weren't very much the same, if not identical. We celebrate Veterans Day on the anniversary of the armistice that ended World War I, the armistice that began on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. And I wonder, in fact, if all Americans' prayers aren't the same as those I mentioned a moment ago. For all we can ever do for our heroes is remember them and remember what they did, and memories are transmitted through words. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise. We see them as something like the founding fathers, grave and gray-haired. But most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. And all we can do is remember. There's always someone who is remembering for us. No matter what time of year it is or what time of day, there are always people who come to this cemetery, leave a flag or a flower or a little rock on a headstone. And they stop and bow their heads and communicate what they wished to communicate. I think sometimes of General Matthew Ridgway, who, the night before D-Day, tossed sleepless on his cot and talked to the Lord and listened for the promise that God made to Joshua, I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. We are surrounded today by the dead of our wars. We owe them a debt we can never repay. All we can do is remember them and what they did and why they had to be brave for us. All we can do is try to see that other young men never have to join them. Today as never before, we must pledge to remember the things that will continue the peace. 
Today as never before, we must pray for God's help in broadening and deepening the peace we enjoy. Let us pray for freedom and justice and a more stable world. And let us make a compact today with the dead. A promise in the words for which General Ridgway listened, I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. I told you I was coming home. I
Hill School Choir. Thank you for doing that. We need your help one more time, Middle School, and really let it go this time. If you would, um, before we get out of here, let's thank our veterans for our service one more time. So Middle School, High School, will you please stand and thank them.